everyone welcome back to mob vlog it is monday or wet wednesday may 19th may 19th i guess it's another redness day so today it's going to be milwaukee phil and with with of course red will be met welcome back guys it's mob vlog Red, how's it going today? Hot. <laughs> Hot in Las Vegas as well, let me tell you. It's, it's 90 a, some degrees outside. <laughs> is it really that hot? Yeah. Uh, it's been up there. So uh, today we're going to talk some Milwaukee Phil. And I thought it'd be a great idea because we did the movie Thief uh, last uh, Redness Day a week ago. And we talked about the movie and then said, hey, you guys want to watch it? So uh, Saturday night, we watched the movie. We did a watch along, which uh, quite surprisingly, a, a lot of you came to and hung out for the evening. So thanks again for that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and it, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. So uh, I big news, though, big news. And that is that uh, the that the, the my company, Vegas Specialty Tours, is officially going to be reopening which is fantastic. Uh, a lot of Las Vegas, if you guys are interested, is going to be reopening. Uh, in the beginning of June, uh, there, well, there's no more mask mandates in the casinos. So, you know, they say, hey, if you've uh, gotten your thing, you got your thing, you can walk around without a mask. If you didn't, please wear one. And uh, they aren't checking anybody. They're just taking everybody's word for it. So uh, Vegas is coming back. That means people are coming back. And that means it's time to get to work. So uh, so there's a whole lot uh a whole lot coming up. A couple quick, if you guys are, are just coming in, just a couple quick hellos before we get into the meat of things because most all of you are there uh, and, and everybody, uh, hello. I just want to say hello to all of you. I see all of your comments on the side. So does Red. I see a ton of familiar names uh, and I just uh, uh, thank you guys all for, for hanging out here right now. So it's good to see you guys. And uh, Cindy's here. And yes, Cindy, you, you've already booked your tour. Cindy's on her way out uh, in, in uh, June and is actually going to be doing our, our new tour as well. So which is the underground house historic tour. It's really cool. So uh, I don't want to tell you guys all about that right now because we want to talk Milwaukee Phil. So uh, Red, let's get into it. You uh, knew Milwaukee Phil I met him, talked to him. I really didn't know him that well, but I, I think I'm the only person alive that ever met him. The only person still alive. He's still alive right now, mm -hmm. but that I actually interacted with him. I met him in American Bonding. Uh, the reason that I said, hey, let's talk about Milwaukee Phil today was that uh, in the movie Thief, uh, the gentleman who's playing opposite James Caan his character, which was a Taglia, is that right? Or was it Gags? No, Taglia. Taglia, right. So Taglia, uh, that character was based on mm, Milwaukee Phil. It's based on Phil Aldericio because uh, that so, supposedly from uh, an interview that Michael Mann did or something that uh, was documented by Michael Mann. So, uh, so yeah, that's who it was supposed to be based on. And I said, well, why don't we talk some more about it? So 
hit the like button, guys, if you're just coming in. And uh, Red, so uh, Milwaukee Phil, he, he came from Milwaukee, or he o oversaw Milwaukee, right? I don't know if he ever saw it. He was uh, he was in I That was before my time. He, he was up in Milwaukee for some reason, but um, I really don't know what it is. Uh, okay. You know, it says you can read things about it, but is it true? I don't know. I wasn't there. Right. Uh, Frank said that it was that he oversaw Milwaukee. He was in charge of Milwaukee for a while, or he he came from there, something like that, if I re remember correctly. But uh, he, he came to Chicago, then he went up to Milwaukee. He boxed, so they said. Maybe that was it. Maybe that's yeah. why they. Uh, they yeah, his name him. was Felix, and they said that's no good. We're going to call you Milwaukee Phil, <laughs> according to documentaries. I don't know. Right, right. So uh, he at one time now was in charge of. Can you just kind of go over the hierarchy of where he would have sat? At right after Giancana left uh, uh, Chicago, uh, Phil took over. He was he was next in line to take over, and um, I don't know. He was a powerhouse. Uh, he also arranged. Um, all the things with uh, uh, the Teamsters, all the loans for Las Vegas. Um, they did the skims, like not a real skim from Las Vegas, but it was a finder's fee. And he got into uh, with Seaford and some of those other people that uh, Irv Weiner, uh, they were all there at American Bonding, but they got into um, 1.4 million, I believe. They uh, were trying to launder. And they were having a hard time doing it, but mm -hmm. they did. And they also killed uh, Danny Seaford in the process because he got caught with the IRS. So he was going to turn on. But uh, I'm sure he was involved in uh, the decision making for that process. But I after Phil, after Phil, Phil was the um, Phil was the um, uh, capo or the leader of the Grand Avenue crew. And um, after he went to prison, then Joey Lombardo took over. But all these guys used to meet, later on they met at Cozo's place, which we called the spot. But they all met at uh, American Mountain, and that was at 11th Estate, right about 11th Estate, right next to Mr. Pat's. So did I have coffee with him? Did I sit in the restaurant with him? Yeah, I did. Uh, after a while, he, he would talk to me. In the very beginning, when I first went in there, he wouldn't talk to me at all. But as other people talked to me, he thought I was okay. What was he like? Gravely, rough, coarse. Um, he uh, appeared to be uh, a force to be reckoned with in the sense that um, he actually brought up Tony Spalaccio, and he also brought up um, Frank Schweiss, and about every other person that really tortured. He was really into that sort of thing. I mean, he liked to really hurt people. He didn't want to, he's and that's that's another thing. Uh, he had a mistress or a girlfriend, and he was married, but he he still had a mistress. And somebody went to him. I don't know who. And at the time, I didn't know who either. But they said. Um, the guy was murdered after Phil died. And the term came to me, he reached from the grave and took the guy's life. That's how much he was well liked, respected, and people cared about him that were in that group. Wow. So he was uh, he was actually, and a lot of people think Tony Spilatro's mentor was... Uh, Sam Stefano, And it wasn't. Right. He put... He put uh, uh, Tony with Sam to watch him, to watch him make sure he got enough money in and to collect for him, to work mm -hmm. for him. But he put him with him, kind of like uh, Tony put uh, Frank with him, you know, or Joey Lombardo put uh, uh, Frank Collado with uh, Tony Spilaccio. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same situation. Uh, I understand. And, and he was, uh, somebody asked in the comments, did he, did he growl? Because I remember Frank said. He had a gravelly voice. He had growled a gravelly voice, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> he, he had a gravelly voice. Okay. So that uh, uh, wasn't it Milwaukee. Have been cancer, though. I don't know. <laughs> wasn't Milwaukee Phil the boss of the outfit before he died? Yes. From okay. 67 to 69, and I met him in 1968. So you met him during the time when he was in charge. Yeah. Well, that I did. So and he was he was in charge over Jimmy Katura. I mean, he was the boss. And then I believe Jackie Cerrone took over after him. But I never met Jackie Cerrone. He never hung out with the crew. The only reason I, I actually met the guy and talked to the guy at all was because Jimmy Katura said, go see Joey Lombardo. Mm -hmm. Go see Joey. He's a nice kid. Well, we went up to see Joey. But everybody was gathered there from that crew. They used to hang out at American Bonding, which the building was owned by Joe Cosentino. There was no way you were going to get any wiretaps in there. I mean, the building was actually owned by somebody that was connected. And he had an office there, too. And they had the bond companies there. All the burglars and everything, like maybe from Thief or whatever, these guys would they get arrested. Mm -hmm. And right across the street 11th street they would walk over and whoosh, the bond was made immediately you got bond that was it you got bond no matter there wasn't any maybe or ifs uh as a matter of fact when you sometimes even if you didn't have any money <laughs> all you had to do was uh uh tell them in 15 minutes you'd be out i mean other people had to wait for b of i bureau of identification for their prints to clear and stuff like that. These guys didn't have to wait. They made a phone call over, bang. It was taken care of. They were out. And then if you didn't have the money, they'd put you on juice. And tell you to go out and pull another score. And, you know, we need the money. Keep the money coming in. That's how it goes. Did he work under Frank Ballesteri? You know, I don't know. That was in Milwaukee. So I really don't know. Okay. He might have. Okay, he, he might have. Uh, Frank Schweiss, Gary Mushinsky's asking about this. Frank Schweiss, did he kill Milwaukee Phil's cousin? Didn't he kill Mil Milwaukee's Phil's cousin who owned the Admiral? Yeah, Pat Pat Riccardi. Pat Riccardi. Pat Ricciardi. We call him Ricciardi. They call him Pat Riccardi, Ricciardi. But he owned the Admiral Theater. He was actually collecting from the Bijou Theater. And I used to see him when I'd be with Marshall Cofano and we had the doors open and everything. He used to go through the back alley and wave at me and say, hey, how you doing, Red? He right. would come over to the beach to collect. Well, after people started dying and everything, they all went to prison. A lot of people went to prison. Mm -hmm. He didn't give the money. He was at the Admiral Theater, but he never turned in the money from the Bijou. And that's why Frank clipped him. Okay. He, told, he told me before he was going to do it, he said, I got to take care of that guy. He's been rat holing. And he said, I'm going to see him. And I called the FBI and they, uh, there was nobody in the office. Nobody responded. Nobody returned my call. By the time they called me back, it was in the newspapers. He was dead. So second part of Gary's question. Did that cousin no longer have any pull after Phil passed? Uh, his pull was with uh, Schweiss. His pool was with uh, Irv Weiner and people like that from the crew. But going up the ladder, he was not recognized as like a, uh, I don't even know if he was a made guy, you know. Okay. He was a good earner. But like a lot of people, he cheated. I mean, he cheated them out of money. And that's one thing you don't do is cheat them out of money. <laughs> Hell no. That's a no no. <laughs> hell no. That's a, it's a hell no. Um, wow. So a couple of more questions. Yeah, and by the way, guys, if you're coming to hit the like button, uh, do you know any? Do you, you know about the hit on Highway 41 at the LNL Strip Club? No, it doesn't ring a bell. LNL doesn't Strip ring. Club doesn't ring a bell. Okay. And somebody uh, what, highway? Else? what highway? I thought you said 40, 41. Uh, are you talking about a Tannosaurus? I don't know. It was that. It was that was a question from from up uh, in North Chicago, on uh, forty one. 
I don't know. Uh, John Apollo Apollo wants to know. So if you could, if you could. I uploaded this on Facebook so people could watch it or know that it was coming on. And one guy made a comment that I really got a kick of. He said, I'd like to make a comment, but I really can't because if I do make a comment, people, I, I'd compromise something. And I'm wondering myself, what would you compromise? There isn't anything out there. I mean, everybody's dead. True, Maybe yeah. You some of your own life. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> True. Uh, so, so yes, uh, to answer your question there, uh, yes, he did. He growled, uh, Matthew. Um, Eric Epstein, you keep saying that you're you're popping out here. Um, uh, Eric Epstein, he wants me to do a wet T-shirt contest, I think, with him. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, Bears versus Raiders. In Don't think I forgot who you are, Eric. Yeah. Uh, you're, go you're going to the game. I don't think I'm going to go to the game. No, I'm going to be super busy in October. That's our ha Halloween season. So we do the, the haunted tours and ghost tours. And that is our busiest time uh, of, of the year. So, okay. Tom Lusty. Phil was not from Milwaukee. No. no he, was from, he was from New York. And then he came to Chicago. His name is a boxer was Milwaukee Phil. That's correct. Just like. Iupas was Joey O'Brien, his boxing right. name. So thanks for clarifying that, Eric. Appreciate that. Um, or oh, Tom, sorry. Appreciate that, Tom, for clarifying that, Eric. Um, Pam, you want Red to do a wet t-shirt contest. How you doing, Pam? Hey, uh, Pam. To, nice to see that you're on today and Pam's watching. Pam. Very interesting to me. And I'm so, so Pam, I don't I can't respond to every message. Dear, because sometimes I'm driving or I'm working, and then by the time I get back to it, I have four more messages, and it, it, it's crazy. So I'm sorry if I don't get back to every single message. I had somebody else I didn't get back to a message I was telling Red about. I, I didn't get back to this person. They they said, hey, you're going to be doing some tours, and I missed the message, and we already committed to reopening in the beginning of June, and I said, ah, I forgot I didn't get back to the guy, and I was like, he's probably not in town any longer. I'm going to get back to him, and then he sent me another message. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't like that one. I, 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 he, sent, he sent me another message. I was, you can't imagine how fast somebody can go from zero to a hundred. Like I don't know, maybe it's a maybe it's a imbalancement in somebody's mental stability. And yeah, but I swear, crazy the message that that this uh, person sent me. It was profane. It was it's, ridiculous, it's, and uh, it was definitely slanderous. Like if. <laughs> If you don't seriously, if you don't like watching this or you don't you don't enjoy it, that's fine. You don't have to watch or it. Like in this man's case, he didn't like me on the show. But yeah, I don't think it was. I think it was David. I, oh, I think is who he was referring to. Yeah, I think it was David who he was referring to. I don't think it was you, but he. Well, you uh, your guests. Yeah. I, 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 so, if you don't want to watch me, don't watch me. <laughs> pretty wild. Yeah, it's crazy, though. I don't understand some people. but I think anyway, it has a lot to do with this. People think, are really wound up over the, you know, they have nothing to do or they have problems. Um, Van Pasterman, was the story of Jerry Donano told about Milwaukee Phil's girlfriend true? The story is Blackie yes. from Cicero was killed because he dated Phil's girlfriend after yes. Phil died. I just was, mentioned that. He yeah, reached from the grave. He reached from the grave and, and had him assassinated after he died. That was the respect he had. And Chucky Nicoletti was, you know, they were really close, him and Nicoletti. As a matter of fact, they were detained by the uh, police department on the way to the m and m pickup murders or whatever. One body was already killed, and they were on the side of the street looking for, you know, they were all out looking for, I don't know which one it was, if it was McCarthy or the other one. It had to be the other one. I for forgot his name. McCarthy and... Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, they were on the, on the side street, and the police uh, stopped them and asked them what they were doing there, and they said they were waiting for a friend. And they were in the hitmobile. And I believe that was the first time the hitmobile was exposed. But people used to laugh about it because of the way he answered it. 
he was driving and they said, what are you doing here? Oh, we're waiting for a friend. <laughs> uh -huh. when actually they were waiting to pick up the two bodies to put in a truck to drive to be found somewhere. Hmm. Guys, you know, used to, guys I knew used to laugh about that. They thought it was funny. Okay, so how is it that Milwaukee Phil ordered a hit from the grave? Obviously, he told somebody, when I'm gone, I want him dead. <laughs> it's very easy. And those people were loyal to him. Very loyal. Wow. Um, guys, uh, that you guys are watching. If you want to ask any questions uh, and keep it around the, uh, the subject matter for a little while before we open it completely up uh, to, to just random questions, because I see a lot of random questions coming in on the side here, guys, unless you want me to open it to random. But uh, there's, there's something else that I, I want to tell you is um, Phil was always involved in banking schemes. And one of the big ones that was connected somewhat to me was um, when I was around Kurt Hansen, they had taken loans from Marshall Savings and Loan in Berwyn. Now, there isn't very much on the Internet about Marshall Savings and Loan, but they they was owned by the mob. And all these Bohemian people and Czechoslovakian people, they beat a path there, especially from Western Electric. You know, they beat a path there, put their money in savings and loan. Well, Marshall Savings on New Year's Eve, 1964, held a, um, uh, a board of directors meeting and they dissolved the corporation. But before they dissolved it, they gave a lease to Kurt Hansen for, I don't know, it was uh, 100 acres for um, uh, 99, a 90, 99 year lease for a dollar a year on that one place. And on some apartment buildings in Oakland, they gave him, um, they signed it over to him. He was in, he never paid the money on it though. And he just collected the money for years. That was in Chicago Heights. So he was always involved in some bank or a scam that had to do with a bank. Big in the lending, big in money. He was a big earner. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why they, that's why they, you know, you're a big earner, eh? They're going to keep you around and they're going to, you know. I, I predict that uh, if he had not gone to prison and that if he'd not died, he probably would have been a boss a lot longer. Jackie Sharon wouldn't have taken over. Yeah. So he would have, uh, he was that kind of, had that kind of those yeah. qualities. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he was a tough guy. Also, mm -hmm. Schweitz was his bodyguard. He lived right next door to him in, uh, in North Riverside. They had houses right next door to each other. He lived on the corner, Phil did. Okay, so very close. Uh, did Frank the German report to Milwaukee, Phil? Oh, yeah. And the Grand Avenue specifically? Oh, yeah. 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 He was yeah. Phil's bodyguard. He was Phil's bodyguard. He stayed right by, bought a house right next door. Nora, Nora Schweiss remembers, and she made reference to it in Mob Wives, of how she lived there in North, in, uh, North Riverside. Mm -hmm. But never mentions the mob. <laughs> now, you it said that. Exist. I'm sorry? It didn't exist, according to her. It didn't. Um, Larry. No, I'm sorry. Um Alpha boss. So you said earlier that you uh, you said earlier that you would talk with Phil at uh, uh, at the bonding place. Was he easy to get along with? Yeah, he was. If he didn't like somebody, he'd just get away from here, get him out of here. Yeah, <laughs> or he'd do it himself. <laughs> a sense of humor. Pardon? Did he have a sense of humor? Pardon? Yeah, he did. He'd joke I, around. As a matter, or, as a matter of fact, around. I think uh, Joey Lombardo was kind of like his pet for humor, and they used to joke back and forth and all different kinds of things. There were a lot of things they said, you know. Okay. Uh, so one-liners, one-liners, you know. <laughs> yeah, like when your feet fall off, you know, or something like that. Uh, so Red, uh, Red, did Milwaukee Phil have a summer home in Fox Lake? Yes, he did. Do you know they anything all, about it, or 
They all they did. All, they all did. Uh, and that was with uh, Billy Kent, uh, uh, Kent Minnelli Construction Company, and they went up and built a lot of different homes up there. But um, I never went up there, and I really, I didn't see them. I talked mm -hmm. to some of the people that worked on them. You know, different. They actually worked on my apartment above the store. Schweiss brought them in and said, "Hey." Take care of him. <laughs> they did all the work and everything. I didn't have to pay him. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so R Robert's wanting to know: Was Phil a part of the shootout and death of Larry Stubish at the bistro? I don't know. I really don't know. Doesn't ring a bell at all. Okay. No. Not everything's going to uh, to always. You know, you can't know everything. <laughs> you got to remember, I wasn't that close to him. I mean, I met him. I was around him. But then I went with Joey. And I was with Joey. And Joey was his. So was I that close to him? I don't know. It's kind of like right. Frank Pilata. Was he that close to uh, Joey Lombardo? I don't think so. I don't think they were close. Tony and him were close. But I don't think Lombardo had any use for him, really, other than to tell him what to do. Matthew Vanek said, I was told Milwaukee Phil really liked old Italian runes, and Giancana had to tell him to shut up about it during a meeting. That was caught in a wiretap. <laughs> really? Yeah, he was over in uh, Greece, and uh, he was actually he was doing a narcotics deal over in uh, Europe, and uh -huh. he kept talking about how beautiful the runes were. He said, and they're talking long distance over the phone, right? And Giancana uh -huh. had all kinds of problems with Bill Romer at the time. And... Uh, He's he's talking about, oh, you, you should see the sunset. You should see this. You should see the buildings, the architecture. And I guess uh, Giancana went off on him and screamed at him and said, Sam, or, or said, Phil, I want you back here. Forget the runes. I don't even want to hear a lot of profanity involved. Yeah, he yeah, said, yeah. I don't hear about the runes. He said, I got oh. enough problems right back here. Forget the runes. Get back here. <laughs> wow. Um Okay, Larry Larry is asking, Larry Lapper is asking, uh, I read Fiore and Teets had a sit-down over territory. Uh, Ferriola, Ferriola interjected, and Milwaukee Phil leaped over the table and threatened him. Do you know about this? Yes, I heard about it. Okay. It was about the South Side Territory. And they got into it and got... Physical, yeah, I guess. I'm sure they didn't get into it too much because Phil was the kind of guy who'd just grab you by the shirt and yank you right in and put his face right up against yours and tell you what time of day it was. Phil was that kind of guy. He was right, easy. This... He was like a, a time bomb. When he went off, he went off. Okay. Guys, be sure to hit the like button. This one's going to be a little bit off of the wall here, though, but Grievous is asking, uh, any info on Milwaukee Phil's cousin? Eddie the eggplant pantano pan pantalon lanoni pantaloni pantaloni Eddie the eggplant pantaloni I mean is this is this really real or yeah, are you, you saying he's being funny right hey come on so <laughs> uh slim 74 did Donnie Brasco's vending machines have any effect on Phil I don't think so no uh, Eric Epstein, did the outfit have their hands in Maywood or Hawthorne racetrack? Yes. Okay. Anything that was paramutual, they had their hands in. Uh, so everyone, if you just come in and hit the like button, what's going on, Brett? It's good to see you. Uh, thanks for stopping in today. So the, uh, creation of Lake Geneva, John Apollo Apollo is asking, uh, was the outfit involved with the creation of Lake Geneva? Yes. In a lot of ways, they moved up there, just like Fox Lake. They moved up there to get away from Chicago. It was like a getaway. I mean, uh, I believe Ralph Capone was up there. Now, by the way, Ralph Capone got along very well with Milwaukee Phil. He was out in Willow Springs at the time. Ah, uh, okay. Willow Springs. Yeah. Uh, okay, Slim seventy four. I have no idea what this really what this means, but uh, is the shotgun tied to the feet hit? Did it really happen? Shotgun tied to his feet hit. I don't know what this means, but I don't either. 
I don't okay, know what no, it means. Uh, no idea. Okay, guys, if you want to ask questions about Philip, we're, we're going to. People used to talk about different things that happened at the armory uh, or garage next to it or near it. And Phil was always over at the armory with, um, so they said, um, with um, Sam Giancana. Oh, okay. So he was there quite often. Yeah. Uh, so, so guys, if you want, we're, we're going to open it up to to uh, whatever questions you guys would like to ask. If you want to stay on Milwaukee, Phil, you can. If you have some other questions uh, for Red, that's cool. Uh, just go ahead and ask them out. I do want to tell you, though, uh, before we go any further, I just want to really quickly say that uh, the, the the Vegas Specialty Tours, I'm reopening the tour company. Uh, we're reopening the tour company. The whole team is uh, doing it. And... Uh, and it's going to be fun and it's going to be also a lot of work because being a business owner means that I'll work 120 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week for some other, some other guy. So just how what I you're am. Saying is you won't be on YouTube that much. <laughs> I, I prob I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it is a ton of work running a channel and I'm not going to stop running this channel and other channels that, that I have, but, uh, but it's it's it does cut into the time quite a bit, and uh, we do run the Vegas Mob Tour uh, here in town. And yes, that is a picture of me from about 15 years ago when I first moved here. Uh, we also have the Haunted Vegas Tour that we run and the Good Springs Ghost Hunt. So um, so yeah, and I want to show you guys. Just, this is just I, I ran across this and I said, you know, this is really cool. And two of the guys that are in this video are no longer. Uh, with us, and they, they, the, my was my mentor when I first moved to Vegas, and he's the one who created the Vegas Mob Tour and the Haunted Vegas Tour, and um, he was just all around cool guy. And the other was one of our tour guides, uh, Bobby Lucchetti, who's no longer with us. Uh, we lost him earlier in the year, and uh, that was uh, terrible. But anyway, they uh, this video is made by. The last two years have been kind to Vegas. <laughs> no, they haven't. So anyway, I'm going to let this roll and then we'll open it up for uh, any questions. Guys, enjoy. Yo, Bugsy, it says here they got something called the Vegas Mob Tour. Yeah, Bobby, ain't you heard? It's all about our old friend Sam Giancana, Meyer Lansky, Mo Dalitz, and of course yours truly, Bugsy Siegel. Are you kidding? A mob tour about us? Yeah, they take you to where we used to hang out and to where all the places where we used to do our crimes. You mean they expose all our secrets? Yeah, but it's okay, because we ain't around anymore. So, let's face it, <laughs> we can't get busted. <laughs> hey, you think we can sneak on board and check this out? Of course we can. Forget about it. They'll never even know we're there. So, <laughs> anyway, that's... Kind of cool. Anyway, so you, the whole reason, by the way, that uh, and I want you guys to to understand something, so nobody else will write me emails that I like the ones that I got the other day, um, then or waste their time writing those emails to me because you kind of wasted your time. Uh, do you didn't kind of you wasted your time doing that, uh, but you know the reason I, I I wanted to keep things going was one. To because this channel was started with Frank Collada was one to preserve Frank's um, historic knowledge, and to do that uh, on YouTube to keep a channel alive, you have to continually post content. And I think on Monday, a couple of days ago, I posted a video and it was a mob flashback uh, of Frank telling a story about eight minutes long about uh, a certain about Tony Spilatro. Uh, I can go back and take videos that were already created and I can pull little sections of them out and I can repost them and call them mob vlog, vlog flashbacks. And that'll keep the videos, it'll keep YouTube's algorithm posting videos and keeping Frank's stories out there and keeping those uh, things alive. So that's I why- love the outtakes. I love the outtakes. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, they're funny. And uh, the- 
the whole that was the whole the whole reason and being able to bring red on which red has a channel on youtube but being able to bring them on and being able to just open up a forum to let you guys interact with red because let's face it i mean red has a historical connection of somewhat whether you believe him or not he's got some type of connection he was there so and it's not up to me to judge or decide uh if somebody is is, is is telling a lie or not it's not my job all i figured i would do with this is, is keep the channel open and let you guys interact with different people interview different authors people that, that have some historical knowledge of value so that's what this is about and uh if you uh it's not if you, about johnny russo <laughs> exactly it's uh you know it's pam sent me pam sent me a message and she said uh johnny russo is selling photographs of himself for 399 dollars autographed ah so here she pam said, i just put it that? and i said what idiot is going to pay for a photograph of anybody for 399 dollars yeah, well, I, people will. I mean, you never, you never know. Uh, P.T. Barnum said, "Sucker born every sucker minute." Born every minute. <laughs> remember that. Okay, remember that. So, uh, Pam, where can you find the schedule and prices for the tours? Well, interesting question. You can look at the bottom of the screen, and you can see the phone number, and that phone number gets you through. And uh, of course, there's also the website, which is VegasSpecialtyTours.com. And you can go there and check out the um, check out all of the uh, um, different tours that we have and the different uh, deals and whatnot. So uh, a lot of it's a lot of fun. Uh, you get to see uh, and hear behind the scenes the whole history of Vegas as far as the mob goes. And we push it together in about two hours, maybe two hours and fifteen minutes. And uh, and you get everything from the beginning, Bugsy Siegel, right on through Mo Daylitz, um, uh and Jimmy Hoffa, and all the Teamsters loans and where they went, and all. And you get to see the town, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. So I've never heard right. anybody complain about it. Everybody said good things about it. Oh I've no, no, we complain. We're we're uh, we're uh, we're ranked really high on uh, TripAdvisor. We have a super high ranking. Then again, we've been at it for. Uh, for for over 15 years so it's uh you get a lot of word of mouth and a lot of people talking about it okay so let's take some uh questions from you guys uh we need we need red he is our court records it's all the truth good job guys but i want to hear what red knows about fox lake lock arms wants to know that and uh for years many years uh lock arms uh, somebody I can't remember who their name or what their name is, but they used to call me from Fox Lake and I used to call them and they were in the boat business and uh, they used to talk about different things. It actually happened uh, when I was doing a Miami um, uh, 411 blog about the murder of Don Arno, which um, Schweiss was named with Wayne Bach in doing it. And he sued Simon Schussler and Richard Burdick who wrote the book and uh, Richard Burdick went into witness protection and uh, the Simon Schusler, I consulted with them uh, to help them settle the lawsuit. Ah, okay. So I hope that answered your question. Locked arms slim 74 to the ant really shut off power at Comiskey park with lefty to get out of a losing bet. I've never heard that. I never did either. Okay. So yeah, sorry. No, Slim 74. Don't know anything. Kenosha Ken. I hate Milwaukee Phil. Right on Kenosha Ken. Uh, Pam, do you drive? Uh, well, being that I uh, am a co-owner of the company uh, and I manage the company, I wear a lot of hats. So I drive sometimes. I do the tours sometimes. I sit back and I just do the office sometimes. And sometimes I don't do anything, but that's <laughs> really 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 rare rarely that that happens so yeah i hope that answers your question but yes i i, I well i'll tell you upon reopening um yeah i probably will be uh delivering some of the uh some of the the tours myself which which is fun i really enjoy it it's uh it's always a blast so, on the hiatus of the tour when, when everything was shut down i believe you took a a few friends 
drove them around. Yeah, I did. A couple of people actually, actually, uh, Scott H stopped in here in Vegas and I met up with him and a couple of other, uh, prescribers and, and it was, it, you know, I enjoy, uh, showing and, and, and doing, it's just, I enjoy it. I don't know. And I enjoy Vegas history. So, and of course, when you go on a tour of Las Vegas, you're going to get what you're on the tour for, and you're going to get a lot of history and a lot of the culture, which there's not, I mean, there's a ton of culture in Vegas because there's a mixture, but anyway, um, lock arms. Red is the Marina name Fox Lake Harbor. Yes, it, Marina. Yes, it is. Uh, so Fox Lake Harbor Marina. <laughs> Man on the Moon wants to know what the Hollywood scandal trials were about. Uh, basically, I believe it was, um, I think it was a combined effort that um, all of the, well, the unions, uh, they were controlling the studios. And in those days, the studios actually built the theaters. So if you go to the State and Lake in Chicago, or you go to the RK Oriental, that building was actually owned by the studios. Mm -hmm. So when you actually shut them down because of motion picture projectionists or whatever, you had control. I mean, they had control of, and then they moved out west. And uh, I believe Rika was the mastermind of that, if I'm not mistaken. But um, those theaters are no longer, I mean, they're all privately owned now. The, uh, the studios don't own them. Outfit boss says, "How did you? Uh, how did Tony meet Milwaukee Phil? Sorry, how did Tony meet Milwaukee Phil?" I don't know. That was before my time. Uh, did did uh, Phil have a mortal enemy within the outfit? Not that I know of. Nobody challenged him that I know of. Hmm. Okay. And Miami Vice said, uh, "They say, hey, Red, I want my shirt back." <laughs> yeah. my, my, Miami Vice with your Hawaii Five O shirt on over there. Well, somebody said they wanted T-shirts, and this was just another one of my warm weather shirts. Like I said, it's ninety degrees here today, so nice. Conroy, did Peanuts ever work with Milwaukee Phil? Yes, he did. They yes, and we talked about Peanuts, and I talked about it. Very interesting. Uh, he came up as a burglar too, Milwaukee Phil. They all came up as burglars, thieves. That just got into bigger scams. The one that made them more money, they grew mm -hmm. in power. So the owner of Fox Lake Harbor's son is pretty powerful out here now, is what Lock Arms said. Really? Randy, yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, I don't know who it is, but years ago, we used to have conversations. Before I wrote a book, nobody cares what I did about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to talk on a regular basis. And then all of a sudden, it broke off like in 2000, uh, 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. somewhere uh, Lisa, Adam, you must be really tall or those other two actors were really short. Uh, I think and she's talking about the uh, the photograph uh, right here. Uh, yes. the So the one guy on the left who was my mentor, he uh, is about five foot or was five foot five. So with the I hat on, he's a little that. taller. And then the next guy to, to him, he's, uh was a, a cousin of his. Um was a little taller, but yeah, I'm standing there in the middle with the Tommy gun. That's how I'm he six. looks like he's five seven. The other guy looks yeah. like he's five I'm, seven. And you look like you're six six. <laughs> I'm say I'm six. I'm six five to answer your question. Ducking your head down just to <laughs> for the photo. Six, I think six five. Yeah, you know what? I I used to I used to slouch in photos to look like I wasn't so damn tall, so I didn't stand out. And uh, and but now now I stand really tall when I take pictures. I don't know why I used to slouch, but yeah, I even had my head down in that picture. You didn't so. want to dwarf everybody, make them a dwarf. 
you know, but now I do because why wouldn't I want to? You know, anyway, all right, Keith Helton. So uh, please tell us about Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, uh, and Don Rickles mob associations. And I know that you met D uh, Don Rickles, right? Yes. And, you know, Keith, Keith made a comment on one of my uh, bedtime stories mm -hmm. with the same question. And I said, I really didn't have any um, information about their mob connections at all. Because they never spoke of it. They never spoke of it. As a matter of fact, I was in shock when I saw uh, Frank Sinatra go before uh, the licensing commission, like Rosenthal had. And uh, they asked him questions about uh, Jimmy Fradiano and different people, Carlo Gambino, different people he had pictures taken with. And he said, no. He said they were just people that came back in the back and you know talk to me but actually i'm quite sure that he was very close to giancana and some of the other people um uh, sinatra i don't know there's a lot written about sinatra he was a legend total legend how tall are you i'm six one okay who had the most powerful crew when you were around those guys oh definitely grandon ogden the Grand Avenue crew was like the most powerful. Okay. Elmwood Park came in later. Um, any info on jo Joe Dano and his bucket of suds? I heard many guys used to hang out there, an amazing bar back in the day. No, I don't have any information on that at all. I'm sorry. You guys can ask anything. That's cool. But, you know, there's no guarantees that there's going to be. A... Uh, ask and uh, maybe I know, maybe I don't. Maybe, maybe I'm not, not, right? I'm not going to make up some story and tell you that I do. Man on the Moon, how did your TV event go last Saturday? Didn't you watch? It's not The Thief. I was corrected a bazillion times. Didn't we watch Thief? Yes, we did watch Thief, and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. All right, so I've only I only saw the movie the first time I saw it was last uh, last week, uh, and then I think Tuesday night I watched it. So yeah, so now now I watched it again with Fred and a bunch of you guys showed up, uh, and and it, I couldn't believe how many people showed up to sit and watch this movie with us. I didn't think that would happen, but uh, a lot of you did, so that was cool. Pam, where's Lewis been? I saw Lewis. Day before yesterday, as a matter of fact, Pam, I met up with Lewis uh, and uh, to to move some things. And uh, he's Lewis is doing all right right now, so he's not doing doing bad. But I haven't. Uh, he, he's been busy, so he's been busy doing. Is this car shop open? No, no, no. He does. He does other stuff. He has a couple other businesses that he does. So okay. yeah, he he's been busy doing that stuff, and yeah. Um, Okay, so this is an interesting question. Lisa wants to know, Red, did you ever look at what Wikipedia wrote about you, and is most of it true? I did look at Wikipedia, uh, what they wrote about me. Sometimes most of it's true, 90% um, of it. But sometimes people got into Wikipedia, and they would write things in there like this rat or something like that, and somebody else would correct it. So I haven't looked at it lately, but just about everything in there is true. Recently, uh, somebody um, uh, made a comment uh, today when I got up this morning. I read it. It was a comment about uh, how could I uh, how could I even be around somebody that murdered three little boys? Well, obviously, this guy didn't read the book, or he doesn't know anything about me. All it is is hearsay that he's heard. And mm -hmm. that's happened so many times. Mark Parker did it from CBS News. Um, it, maybe 100 people have done that. So, but my Wikipedia is pretty accurate. Hmm. So, yeah, I was just, I was just glanced through it. And it seems like, yeah, it's. I can't read it. What's it say, Adam? 
Uh, it says that you're an FBI informant who testified against organized crime figures in the Chicago area, and you were stated in court. You were an informant from 71 to 89. In 16, uh, you authored a book called Nobody Cares and What I Did About It. And then when Matt and his partner operated a pornography shop in Chicago, they paid street tax extracted by a group of criminals. We met, made arrangements with the FBI to have his discussions with mobsters recorded. He met with FBI agents in 71 at the Lion House in Lincoln Park Zoo. You met with FBI agents at the Lion House in Lincoln Park Zoo and agreed to become an informant for them in exchange for their payments to him for the information he would provide on the mob activity and figures. We met had video cameras concealed in his apartment that captured his regular meetings with organized crime figures. We met has been a key witness with a number of federal trials of mobsters and other Chicago area crime figures and is associated with organized crime law enforcement officers, including John F. Flood. I'm sorry, John J. Flood. He provided details that led to the conviction of Frank Schweiss in the 1995 trial of Kenneth Hansen for the 1955 Peterson Schusler triple homicide and most recently in Operation Family Secrets that helped close several chapters of the Chicago Mafia activity in history. I mean, that's, that's a pretty well-rounded description of you. Yeah, there's some notes where they got all the information where things that were written about me in books that they right. said were credible right below that. Yeah, all of those, correct, all those uh, statements are backed up by different, uh, yeah. News articles, whatever. Correct, yes. Books. I was written about more than anything. I couldn't imagine all the things that were written about me. Yes. So I just to write my own book and set the record straight. This is from the horse's mouth. Got it. And, you know, it says in here, too, that you were paid to be an informant. Uh, by yeah, the I used to sign these little receipts that used to say $25 for uh, <clears throat> food, cab fare, and cigarettes. And I, I'd, I'd take the $25, and then we'd always meet at a restaurant. So I'd have to pick up the tab for 25 bucks out of my money. So, no, I did not get rich off the FBI, let me tell you. <laughs> I, I got to tell you something, something else. So people, they think they're like, wow, this, uh, this, uh, this Adam Flowers is he's rolling in the dough and the YouTube money, you know, and uh, I, I got news for you. <laughs> There's a reason that I'm reopening the tour company to do tours, okay, and to take people around. Because if, if I had to pay the bills with what I made on YouTube, I'd be, I'd be living in a box, outside in an alley somewhere so very my, interesting company for neighbors <laughs> or my youtube from my phone you know <laughs> yeah anyhow okay so um let me get uh that's that's funny matthew vanek uh can you buy six cent red a carton no that's that i don't think you can do that uh anyway guys it's been uh it's been well, Slim seventy four does does the outfit own Atlantis in Ford Heights and the industri Industrial Strip in Hammond? Oh my God, I forgot about Industrial Strip. Thanks for reminding me, Slim seventy four. Industrial Strip, wow, what a place. Um, so anyway, yeah, did the outfitter does own, own those places? Yes. Atlant I, so there you go. And Atlantis is over there on in Chicago Heights on. Um, Gosh, because it wasn't far from, from Club 390, which is was on Highway 30, and it was not far across town from there. So, anyway. so That was all controlled. <laughs> well, I, I, anywhere where you're going to have money and you're going to have... A surplus of money. Yeah, you, you're going to have... A joint there, make it very much. They're not going to bother you. <laughs> you're going to have crime. I just... It's how it is, right? So that's an interesting question, Chicago Geek. Did the outfit work with the Chinese Mafia? Yes. Oh, well, they still do today, as a matter of fact. Well, actually, during Never mind. I'm not, I'm not going to say it because because this damn thing will get shadow banned if I say it. But <laughs> During Family Secrets, um, they were um, Frank Schweiss and several other people were um, 
indicted for uh, I think it was fifteen thousand a month that they used to allow the Chinatown in Chicago to do their gambling without being bothered. And that wow. was going to come up in Family Secrets, but Schweiss died or was he wasn't able to stand trial because he had cancer. That was a whole sham. They knew he was never going to get well. Right. Lawyers kept saying, yeah, yeah, he's going to get well. But don't forget, they were getting paid. He was indigent. And they were getting paid by the government. So, they, oh, yeah, he'll be back. He'll be, oh, he's dead. <laughs> Meanwhile, they all got paid. Yeah. Uh, John O., I thought that the Russian mafia runs the strip clubs. No. Uh, you know, there's, there's I, I know in Vegas, there's different organized crime from different parts of the world in Las Vegas. I know I was warned about it when I moved here. I was warned about it by people who knew and they were like, look, this is where you don't want to go and this is where you want to stay away from. And so wherever you're going to have a lot of Sin money, City. yeah, Sin you're going <laughs> to have a lot of crime. All right. When there's prostitution and there's drugs and there's all this stuff involved, there's going to be there's going to be some corruption. I mean, you know, come on. It is it's, it's what it is. So, um, okay, uh, Loading Gamers, when did Frank Rosenthal die? He died, hold on, from memory, 07. And I want to say it was October 11th, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It might have been December 11th. Let me look. He uh, died in Miami, but I believe they shipped his body to Chicago. Uh, that I don't know. October 13th. 08. I was off by a year in a... Yeah, I was off. All right. Yeah, 08. I knew it was sometime right when I moved to Vegas. I thought it was the second. It was the third. Second. Last time I saw him, he looked like he had one foot on a grave and the other on a banana peel. He was yeah. very emaciated. Well, he, he smoked till he died and he, he ate a steak every day, um, from what I understand. He was a love Tony Roma's and uh, yeah, I, I heard some things like that. Uh, Dazzling Urbanite, thanks for the super sticker, buddy. Appreciate that. Hit the uh, like button, guys. Hit yeah, the guys, like hit the like button. Get the video out there. Uh, Red, did you know John? Oh, my gosh. Did you know John Wayne Gacy before he was found to be a serial killer? No. As okay. Matter, wait. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. As a matter of fact, that was brought up in the defense of Ken Hansen murdering the Schusler peterson boys, that uh -huh. Gacy was a possible suspect but what they didn't see was that in 1955 he was only 13 years old i cannot see a 13 year old kid managing and killing a 14 year old a 13 year old and an 11 year old i mean three kids and not only that he had a limp he had something wrong with his leg he couldn't get around well he was always wow. a chubby guy so okay it, it was brought up but but you did but you did but you did know Jeffrey Dahmer. Yes. Well, see, no, you guys didn't know no, that. No. Did I see him? Yes. He used to troll the uh, the bookstore. He used to troll Carol's Speakeasy. He actually murdered somebody uh, that he picked up in Carol's Speakeasy at the Drake Hotel. And he put him in a large suitcase and brought him home to Milwaukee. That's messed up. So, but you used to see this guy. So then when he ended up on the news, you were like, I know that. I've seen that face. The police asked me, the police asked me, did you, did you see this guy? They showed me the photo. I said, yeah, I saw him. Yeah. He came in and out, you know, he was in and out around here, but evidently he was uh, very popular for going into uh, uh, porn, porn shops in Milwaukee too. He used to pick up people in there and have sex with them or whatever. My gosh. Um, no, that's that's crazy. So he was crazy. Uh, I know that he was put in Terre Haute prison. That's where he was held, and that's where he was killed uh, when they beat him to death in prison. And no, I knew one of the that what? was in Wisconsin. It was in Wisconsin. Yes, he wasn't in Terre Haute. He was in no, Wisconsin. They tried to extradite him to Ohio, and because he committed a murder in Ohio, that's where he was from. And uh, Wisconsin didn't have the death penalty. So they never did extradite him, and he was beaten to death by a couple of black guys in the shower 
They I say, know. I, I, I know because there's a magician that I knew that it was at a magic convention that I was at, and he was a prison guard, you know, Magic Zabi, and, and he's a prison guard. And he said that he actually watched on Dahmer, that he was one of the guards on the set. And, 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 and those guys who beat him up, before they killed him, they took his face and they put it against a meat slicer and they shaved his nose down and they put it on pizza and they ate it because the guys, they wanted a Dahmer nose pizza. Okay. Silence. All right. So I've died before. It's fine. <laughs> I've died before. This is shock effect because I, you know, he used to eat body parts. I a, know it's like it's just so sick. for somebody else to eat him, I don't know. All right, so um, so so, so off that subject, uh, off that subject, and on to something else because we're going to wrap up off. And oh, I'm sorry, guys, uh, everybody, uh, and especially, um, especially uh, Ryan Brown. Uh, I just wanted to say a thought about you this week and uh, says a prayer for you. And uh, your mom's wake was this past Sunday. And um, I really hope that you're staying strong, brother, because uh, we're all thinking about you, every one of us uh, that's watching this. So stay strong, buddy. It's not a, it's a tough damn thing to, uh, to go through. To, anyway. lose parents, to lose parents. I know I've lost mine to lose parents, to lose children, Somebody that's very close and near to you, it's hard to take. And the grieving usually takes a year or better before you get over it. Maybe even longer than that. Some you know? people hang on forever. Maybe longer than that. Yeah. So sometimes a little bit of counseling helps, um, inner soul looking, but yeah, you're going to miss them. You're going to miss them. It's just how, it's how it goes, right? And, you know, nothing ever uh, is going to fill that either, I don't think. No. Just you can't fill. That's like uh, having uh, two children. Which one is the uh, more valuable? The one child or the other child? You don't fill the void with the one that's left. No. No. Brett lost his, his mom. doesn't go away. No, nah, man. It just doesn't. So it's not. Sorry, Brett. Yeah. Sorry, man. Um, yeah, yeah. If you, if you have your parents still, man, enjoy every moment you can with them. Every moment. Cause you never know. You never know. Uh, last question, Robert Belavia, Belavia, Bellavia, Bellavia, Robert no, Bellavia. I, I did not know him. No, Tyson's Acosta. Sorry. Did not know him. Uh, you, uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, Adam, can you windmill dunk? LOL. <laughs> no, I can't. I never, I never could. And uh, I think you said earlier that you wish that you were six foot five because you're from Indiana. You're a Hoosier and you love basketball. And uh, no, I just didn't. I didn't. Uh, I played like in eighth grade and I, uh, yeah, I was, wasn't into it. And then football and high school, it just uh, sports just wasn't. I, yeah, yeah, I didn't like sports. What can I say I was I was a computer nerd. Uh, so <laughs> what can I say? I still my knees are still good though. See, my buddies who played their knees are all shot. They can't stand up. They can't walk. Yeah, around. You, you didn't blow out a knee or anything. You're That's lucky. what I mean, right? That's what I mean. So, Ginger, really sorry to hear that, um, man. You know, uh, Mickey Griggs, good to see you. And uh, Red, uh, did you know anybody from Rag Ra Ra Reagan's Colts, which was an Irish street gang? Never heard of it. Reagan's Colts. Never heard of it. Phil Ross, Mickey Griggs, it's good to see you, man. But we're just closing this thing out. Cause it's good it, to see uh, all you guys. <laughs> it was, yeah, it's good to see all of you. So and guys, uh, go to my channel and you look at my videos and you go back in the archives. There's a lot to look at. Check but, the description. Yeah. You guys go go look at Red's got a playlist. You guys can watch through his. He's posting things. Uh, we're gonna keep posting things on mob vlog. We're gonna be doing a lot of those mob vlog short flashback shorts. 
uh, of Frank. And again, the reason that we're posting them is to, if, if, if we don't post, YouTube doesn't look at the algorithm. It just doesn't show the channel. And, and if it doesn't show the channel, Frank's uh, his store, uh, history, gone. Uh, you know, red, whatever red's put on here is gone. Whatever, anything else, it just goes away. YouTube stops showing it. So in essence, to keep, um, to keep, to keep that history alive, Gotta we're going to keep, 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 keep posting videos. Well, Lisa, we should all meet for the mob tour in October. Yes, come on out. And uh, that would be a lot of fun. It'd be really cool to have you guys out here uh, for the tour. And you don't have to all come at once. You can come individually. It uh, doesn't matter, but we'll be running them. And you can buy tickets at VegasSpecialtyTours.com. Those will be up and available very, very soon. We're, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I just got off the phone with the ticketing people because we're getting things set up right now. So Mickey Griggs has been binge watching Red. Right on. So yes, I noticed that, Mickey. <laughs> I've All got right. like four or five binge watchers that are going through this at nighttime because I wake up in the morning. There's all these comments. Yeah, no, there, there's a few that are uh, that are going through, and I know that there's about uh, 120 videos there. O Ovidia Sinclair. Uh, Ovidia Sinclair has been uh, binging through all of these. David Grip Keto Time. Yeah, I'm going to be doing some more vlogging on the keto. And uh, I am, I'm on week three right now, and I'm down like 11 pounds now. So it's working. And I'm also mixing a lot of exercise into it. But I'm vlogging about that on my lifestyle channel if you want to watch that. Anyway, hey, Red, it's been awesome having you on again this uh, Redness Day, as we've been calling it. So thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. And There's thank all you people. I'm and looking at your names up here as I go along. <laughs> Slim74, <laughs> Eric. It's kind of cool. it's kind of funny how this just whole thing gelled Where together. These names. Where do we come up with Stoner? Stoner guitarist. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm, I got them all down. Luminous Grin. I remember them all. You know, they're all in there. Bud Gibson, Herb Knight. I remember Messi, <laughs> All of them. They're all there. It's all good. You guys are great. Uh, thanks for watching. Hey, if you didn't enjoy it, don't watch. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. And but if uh, you did, hit the like button. Yeah, be sure to hit that like button, guys. That's what gets it out there. And uh, hey, it's been fun. But uh, until next Redness Day. Uh, we'll be uh, seeing you guys. So have a have a great day, and um, we're out. This has been another episode of my vlog.